I've mentioned a couple of times already that I've been to Peru. I went about this time last year, and the reason why I'm making this video now is because recently I had a really good opportunity to reminisce about everything I got up to whilst I was there. And that's because my housemate from when I was out there has recently flown from Australia to Europe to go travelling around for a few weeks. I took the opportunity to meet up with her again and we had a chat about our highlights of our time in Peru. I just want to say now before you watch it that I feel like my highlights are a bit rubbish because when it came to it, when I had to actually think about everything I'd done during those six weeks and just come up with three things on the spot, for some reason my mind went blank and I said very generic things. I went to Machu Picchu and I climbed Huayna Picchu which was an incredible experience. I spent about six hours or seven hours there. I went to Lake Titicaca, I crossed the border into Bolivia, I went to all of the islands on the lake. I met incredible people, so humble and so friendly and so welcoming. I went down south to Arequipa and to Colca Canyon, which is supposedly the deepest canyon in the world. I taught English at a really small school in Urubamba, which is a tiny town close to the provincial capital of Cusco, which used to be the ancient Inca capital. I learned a bit of Quechua, which is the local Andean language. I saw so many ruins that I lost count. I went to local markets, I tried local food. I integrated myself with local life. I'm actually wearing a t-shirt now, the Beatles, in homage of my father during my time in Peru because every single lunchtime, without fail, we would sit down and he would put on the Beatles as we ate. <laughs> you knew when lunch was over because the CD ended. So I hope you enjoy the video. If there's anything you want to know in more depth about the things I got up to, maybe how I got to Machu Picchu, how I organized things, who I went there with, how I ended up teaching English, Whatever, just leave a comment or send me a message and I'll do my best to help you out. So without any further ado, here's the video. Enjoy! So I just spoke about everything I did in Peru and I rung up my friend Kat. Here I am. My housemate from Peru for about six weeks, weren't you? And uh, she's flown all the way in from Brisbane, Australia to be here. Literally 24 hours of travel just for Chris's video. Yeah. Uh, and all your YouTube followers. <laughs> I figured I'd get Kat along just now so we can talk about some of the highlights that, that we got up to. So starting number three for me, it could be number one, but it's just, I'm sure it's the same for you. It's just so stereotypical to go to South America and say this is the best thing you did. Yeah. So I'll just put it at number three, just so it's in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I loved Machu Picchu. Yeah. I think it's the only thing I've ever seen in real life that looked exactly like all of the photos of it. I spent about six or seven hours just walking around. It's a once in a lifetime thing, probably. Actually, I might go back, I don't know. I'm thinking, yeah. Yeah, it's probably what not. Did Maybe not a once in a lifetime thing. <laughs> kidding, <but laughs> just kidding. It was a really nice sort of thing to finish on because I then left two days after that. What about you? I'll put it up higher. You put it up higher? I'm gonna put it up higher. I'm gonna higher. put that at two, but my third was Lake Titicaca. That was fun. It was awesome. It was the best. Was well, the third best. <laughs> 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 um, I really liked when we went to the islands and stayed with yeah, the Yeah, yeah, the uh, uh, floating islands. Yeah, we were all sick. They gave us really good soup though at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was freezing. I thought you were thinking about the islands, like the, when we went in and like awkwardly you got dressed up. Oh, like, oh <laughs> yes! <laughs> I actually, I'm gonna send you a picture of that. Yeah, so we're on the islands and we were taken, literally taken hostage, took us into their huts, um, mm -hmm. made us get dressed in <laughs> traditional gear. I had on, I don't want to offend the culture, but it was a ridiculous hat. And then we were forced to buy things. Except I, uh, for Chris, because he's a... What did she call me? A Kanye? Was it, I remember I was taken in to her house and she tried to get me to wear her dead husband's clothes. Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> so morbid. That just wasn't great. I really didn't want to buy any of her stuff, but I eventually <laughs> haggled her down <laughs> and I bought something for 30 souls, um, which I actually now have framed here in my bedroom. I think my number two is just going to be sort of a general integration with the culture. Mm. There definitely is culture shock when you go to Peru from somewhere like the UK or Australia. But they're just so nice. They're such lovely, lovely people that they will ask you what you're up to and what you're doing. And they're so polite and friendly and want to offer you everything that they have. Like when we were staying with the family and you were just talking about, we asked them if there was anything we could buy from them as like a thank you. And they brought out all of these garments that they made and we bought a pair of socks. <laughs> and split them like <laughs> three ways. But no, just the general sort of immersion in the culture. We lived with the family for six weeks, like getting to know them on a personal level and just forgetting that England, London actually exist. Mm. What about you? Number two. Number two. I went to the Amazon in my last two weeks and it was, it was really beautiful. Jealous. I loved it. Yeah, it was 
I want to, I definitely will go back there. So basically awesome. nothing we've done has been a once in a lifetime experience. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. that's for a good reason because we loved it's it so good. much. We good. want to make sure it's not a once in a lifetime yes. experience. That's probably the step up from a once in a lifetime experience. I think so. I think so. Okay, I made four great friends. <laughs> they were all 60 plus and <laughs> Canadian. <laughs> we love Canadians. I love Canadian. I love all Canadians. First day we walked through the rainforest, went on this like really long bridge. And then we did, um, what's it called? When you, the um, banjo. No, no, yes, this way. When you, oh my goodness. You, you cut, you're, you no, cut you're strapped bamboo. in. You're you... not even close. I'm up in the air at this point. Uh -huh. You're strapped in. Oh, zip wire. Yes. Zip lined zip line. through the forest, which was incredible. That's cool. I've got like an awkward, like, <laughs> kind of video, of, like, just like going around, <laughs> turning around, screaming. But just the fact that you were there. No, cool. I loved it. I loved it so much. It was so, so hot, though. Mm -hmm. Like, no, I think it was 40 degrees. Yeah. I um, couldn't cope with that. Just 24 <laughs> hours of sweat. You have to go there. <laughs> um, number one, the history. Yes. Of everything that I saw, because we stayed in. A little t town called Urubamba, which is close to Cusco, the Inca capital. There was just so much history, so many ruins. I think t it got to the stage where I'd actually seen too many ruins, and I felt like I never wanted to look at another yeah. ruin again. <laughs> Looking back, <laughs> at it, it's like. <laughs> but now, like it was incredible. Like the amount that I learned about a culture I knew nothing of, um, but I'd always wanted to. And Machu Picchu was a highlight of that. But the people themselves are so proud of their roots. Just. Everything there just was so authentic and it just felt untouched. I went to like a really small town in the middle of nowhere in Peru. It was, it was a much better experience than if I'd gone to somewhere like Lima or one of the big cities. And obviously also the chance for me to practice my Spanish was invaluable. What about you? Um, number one, it's a big number one. Number one, yeah. I'm just kind of like grouping yours and mine together. That's it's pretty much the same. I wanna, yeah, Machu Picchu is incredible. But I'm thinking like just the Andean culture. That, yeah, they're really spiritual people. Yeah, totally. Although, it's interesting that like Catholicism really ruled their life still, though. Mm. Um, but they have such respect for they still like, respect. their ancestors yeah, and yeah. all of like the surroundings that they yeah. live in. Like, I remember they, they used to worship like the mountains and rainbows and yep. um, the like, rain. Yeah, it was like Apu was mountain gods or something. Yeah, definitely go back. Totally, and definitely it completely back. changed what you're doing, hasn't it? Absolutely, yeah, this year. I'm supposed to go into mass communications. At university. After Peru, I changed completely into anthropology and Spanish. So. It's a big change. For the better. <laughs> um, it's quite surreal seeing you outside of con the context. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but nice at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice I just to see said you. weird, not even <laughs> just weird. No. Um, that's everything for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time. See you later. Bye. <laughs> okay, wait. Bye! <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a treat when you watch that back.